Hey, coming up on This Week in Radio Tech, Chris Tobin and I are at Rattle and Hum in New York City in Manhattan. We're talking about uh, all kinds of things we saw at the AES and NAB convention. Is it going to be a good show? Excellent show. Spatial it's, audio, immersive audio. It's a great show coming up, plus some great tips right here on This Week in Radio Tech. This Week in Radio Tech is brought to you by BSW Broadcast Supply Worldwide and the Vivid Voice Sale. Choose from five professional voiceover packages designed by Joe Cipriano. By the Telos VX VOIP talk show system, now used by local and network television broadcasters to streamline workflows and provide perfect communication with remote crews. And by the new Ruby console from Lavo, with auto mix smart mixing and a context sensitive user interface. See Lavo in your future at lavo.com slash work. Hey, welcome into This Week in Radio Tech. It's Kirk Harnack, Chris Tobin. Hello. We are together with the same weather forecast. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a it's, great day in New York City. It is a great day in New York City. We're doing the show live from New York City. Why? Because both Chris and I, well, Chris lives here, but I'm here also for the AEF and the AB New York show. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and uh, so we've got interviews to bring you from the show floor. Now, actually, I did a few interviews at uh, the convention. And uh, we did. I did a panel discussion at the AES. Yes. that was a great discussion. Good. The, yeah. the, the on that 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 dais was it was unbelievable. The amount of information anybody who was watching, or, or uh, I'm sorry, sitting in the audience watching, and those who will be listening on the tapes that you can purchase later, or I guess yeah, I guess it's purchased. yeah, they're purchased. Yeah, um, so. you will you. Will, and I think you pointed out in one of the emails was about two thousand dollar an hour consulting fee. <laughs> Yeah, the amount yeah. of information you, you will get, and trust me, it is very good. Yeah, and we're all of us on the panel were very animated about explaining why you should not do certain things a certain way, despite what you might think is the proper method of using mobile, console, furniture, mm -hmm. or as Gary points, sight lines for your picture and posts of show. Because you know, a, con a, a, a VGA monitor, I'll just say VGA, but a computer monitor in the way of a person doing a show with a Good, Gary. Really good yeah. stuff to show, and so did Jason talking about studio layouts, and then Tony Javasi as well with some of the stuff of building and purchasing. And you know, he talked about purchasing. It was interesting. He said, you know, there's tax breaks you can get. There are certain tax way methods that you can use to invest in capital. So all these things in the panel we had, Kirk was the moderator. Trust me, it's worth <clears throat> looking into. We had a panel that was so good. Some of the best people in the business, and and I referred to. We got two thousand dollars an hour worth of uh, consulting uh, uh, value here. We had, of course, Chris Tobin, Gary Klein, uh, Jason Ornelas with CBS yes. in Sacramento, and uh, Alex we had Roman. Alex Roman was there. With Daniel MS. Hyatt. Daniel Hyatt. Yeah. Uh, who else did you say? Uh, I was saying Alex Roman with MS. Uh, yeah. With MS, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a, an all-star panel. Anyway, I wish we could bring you that, but we couldn't tape that. It's available by audio tape. But what we can bring you are some interviews from the show floor at NAB. And some very sharp engineers. Now, by the way, on today's show, we're going to cover not only audio, but a couple of video topics as well. More radio engineers are having to learn about video. And oh, that, that's pretty interesting. Uh, we have uh, HDR uh, is, is a topic of one of our interviews today. Yes, it is. And it's pretty interesting that everybody's looking at for UHD, that is 4K video. Maybe even I've seen 8K video. It's It's amazing. But there's a technology that, well, with when you ask people who look at it, tell you that it's more important than 4K. And so we'll be talking to uh, John Humphrey about that with Hitachi USA. So that's coming up. All right. So uh, interviews are coming up. And uh, Gary Klein is first. We got some great insights about the show and about what's important, what's important for engineers like us to look at, to follow, to pay attention to. So that's all coming up. We're going to do a quick commercial break and then get to Gary Klein on the show floor of the AES. Right now, though, I want to tell you about our friends at Broadcast Supply Worldwide, and they're having a Vivid Voice event going on. And that means a bunch of microphone and processor packages that are approved by Joe Cipriano. Let's take a look at the web page for that. You can save and be heard at the same time. Save up to 61% during the Vivid Voice sale at BSW, Broadcast Supply Worldwide. Now, here's some packages that Joe Cipriano 
recommends that. He's been a guest on our show. This guy is an amazing voiceover artist. He knows exactly what he's talking about. You can start out with the starter pack, a good pack where you save 170 bucks, it's just $559. And you get a, an amazing selection of equipment to help you be a better voiceover artist. And hey, if you're an engineer, like a lot of engineers watch our show, listen to our show, if you get somebody saying, hey, what do I need to start out with for voiceovers? You can recommend this package and be confident in the quality of the equipment. You can go to a pro pack that's better. For $1,399, you get... Uh, studio package that has an amazing amount of gear. In fact, you see that mic preamp there um, that that Joe is is offering. I, I oh, I wish I could see the brand of it there. I forgot what it was already. Was the M Audio? I, no, I no, that's not the M. Oh, that was that was not the M Audio. Anyway, I just ordered it. So uh, <laughs> I just ordered it. We'll see what comes in, and I'll talk about it later. Then we have Joe's official studio pack, the best one for eighteen sixty nine. Listen, if you've got a voice. For voiceover, this will make you sound the absolute best. You save $848 off the retail price, too, when you order it from BSW USA during this event. There's a budget travel pack available. This stuff will fit in your suitcase or in your backpack easily, so you can go do voiceovers while you're on the road. And finally, there's Joe's official travel pack. This is what Joe Cipriano carries with him. He does voiceovers in the back of taxi cabs, rental cars, hotel, hotel rooms hotel. with... With mattresses over his head. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. That sounds dangerous. Oh, no. Not the way Joe described it. It was actually very nice. And sheets. There were sheets, sheets involved. Sheets involved. And, pillow, and, and mattresses. Pillows and, pillows. and pillows. Yeah. And, but you know what? At the end of the day, the sound is unbelievable. So if you've got a voice for voiceover, a desire to do voiceover, then check out these packages from bswusa.com. Go to that website and check it out. Look for the, the Vivid Voice uh, a sale. And... Um, one thing to remember about BSW, these guys are smart. They have done a really good thing for broadcasters because they know broadcast engineers like me forget to order something until the last minute. Or you've got a, a voice talent that wants something at the last minute. They've got their main warehouse in Columbus, Ohio, right down the road from the airport. And the airport in Columbus is a hub for UPS. So if you order something as 7 p.m., Time, you can get a plane delivered to you the next day. If it's in stock at the warehouse, they stock almost at BSW, then they can do you next day. Or if you want two day or three day economy, check the web bsw.com. That's worldwide. They've made it a business to make sure you can get what you want quickly. And at an amazingly low price, a big discount. And uh, I, I love these guys. Awesome. All right. So at the uh, AES and NAB show, they've combined these things, right? Yes. Uh, the combined shows now allow you, if you have an AES badge, you can walk through a special passageway into the NAB show. If you have an NAB badge, a badge you can walk through that special passageway into the AES show. Now, some people might say, well, what's the point of that? Big point. Post-production work sometimes have to work with broadcasters and try to understand what it is they do. Yeah. And, you know, just as broadcasters try to figure out what post-production people do. So now you have the ability to cross between a special passageway. And for those, of, <clears throat> and for those of you who don't understand this, it's a very important thing when you have to understand somebody else's business model. Oh, yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah. So it's very important. And I, I can tell you that uh, talking with a few folks like Phil Owens at Wheatstone, he was saying that, the first day of the show, it was interesting that they had a lot of students, educational universities, high schools, coming through and learning and understanding what's going on. And I said, well, where did they come from? He goes, well, interesting. They came from the AES side because their their booth was right oh, at that opening yeah. of the gateway, sort of like the Stargate. Yeah. They're at the they're at the end of the the, uh, the tunnel, you know, the, yeah. the, the wormhole. So he was saying it was fascinating because the questions they had w w made him think. He's like, wait a minute, you know, I never thought of it that way. So it's important to understand that both shows do benefit. So don't panic when you go, oh, NAB, but I can't go to NAS. Oh, you can. And you know what? There's still two days left, so you still have time for those of you watching and listening. So the NAB show, actually, that part's over, but the AES continues. Yeah, yes, the AES. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. AES okay. continues, yes. And AES does have a focus on students. Absolutely. They bring in younger folks, folks in college. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, to be a member. And I've, I've gotten to speak at a couple of uh, AES students. Uh, sections. Yes. Uh, yes. So, okay. Hey, let's let's go to our interview with Gary Klein, 
We're right in the front of the Jacob Javits Center here in New York. And let's see what Gary, who is he's looking out for all kinds of new technology. Let's see what he has to say. Go ahead. It's New York City. Welcome. I'm Kirk Harnack at AES. The 143rd convention of the AES is here, and I'm here with Gary Klein. Hi, Gary. You are. Hi. Hi. Also, the NAB is here, too. NAB New York is here. We used to be content creative or CCW. Oh, is that what it was? But the NAB took it over. So, gotcha. so now I, it's the NAB. I just walked through the whole NAB yeah. hall, talked to a few people there. Amazing, right? H have you been to the AES hall? I've been to both. Okay, so I haven't been to AES yet. I was. We were busy. We, we were on a panel uh, We were on a panel yesterday. We yeah. were together in the same room for a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> With but, some of our closest friends. That's right. That's right. So uh, let's let's talk. Uh, I'll be doing a few reports from here, uh, but let's talk quickly about You're what you've seen. You're here all day. I'll be here all day. I'm here tomorrow, too. Yeah. So well, what have you seen that's cool or interesting? You know, a whole bunch of stuff. The creation, content, delivery, uh, cloud uh, combination is just absolutely amazing. Uh, right. More and more ways to create content from various places on the planet, yes, uh, yeah. share it with folks that are also collaborating and working on it, ways to transport it, uh, just amazing. I mean, just behind us, Avid has, I don't know, must good floor space. I mean, they go on forever with one software product after another for creation right. content. Uh, uh, I've seen some really cool software plugins. One guy back behind us, he he could take sound and move it wherever you want, in front of you, behind you, I've overhead. Heard. Is this called object-oriented editing? Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And okay. uh, just amazing where things are headed. And then when you think about ATS 3.0 and where that's going um, and how these things are going to end up someday in our living room, it's... Uh, it's, you know, fantastic. You know what's cool to see? And, the, of course, the, the AES convention is all about audio. It's the Audio Engineering Society. Well, sure. NAB has a lot of video in it. Right. Yeah. That's right. And, uh, and, and so what I see is there's some big, big companies here, which gives me hope for the future of all this media stuff. IBM is here with IBM a big display. Uh -huh. And uh, I heard Google was here. I didn't see um, Google yet, but I'll go check them out. But I, I definitely saw IBM, and you've yep. got... Oh, you know, uh, Sennheiser, Genelec, sure. Yeah. You know, obviously, uh, uh, the uh, Telos uh, Solutions Group is here. Yeah. A lot of big companies are, are here. Uh, the way this show works, even the big companies, with a few exceptions, their booths are smaller. But, yeah. but don't let that fool you. These are big companies. <laughs> yeah. It's just a smaller footprint of a show, but they're definitely here, absolutely. And, and all these big companies, right, they're involved. I mean, you might be thinking, well, why is IBM at a, at a production show or a television show or an audio show? They make computers. Because they, they own companies that handle storage and transport right, and right. Uh, collaboration and then, yeah, processing. You know how much processing is required for some of the video work that these people are doing? So these folks are all involved. Apparently, I mean, IBM. Amazon Web Services. Yes, yes. Of course, right? Of course. Because <laughs> Cisco's here with switches I've never seen before. Uh-huh. Like, yep. the, like, well, they're all fiber and then there's amazing stuff. There is a whole section of fiber and transport companies here that that if you are uh, a large network and you need 10 gigabyte fiber from one point of the planet to another huh. to share content, there are people here that can tell you how to do that and have the fiber in the ground, things like that. But this everything's like, converged. It's I mean, like an engineer's playground I know it's here. cliche, I mean, but <laughs> things really are converging. Okay, yeah. I mean, we've been saying that for a while, but it's really happening, and these folks are here. So let me ask you about one other thing, and that is virtual radio, or virtualizing the radio process. Sure, which we spent that, a little bit of time talking about yesterday. We did, and that, that, this means different things to different people. I yeah. guess for manufacturers, it means whatever we're doing, this is our idea of virtual radio. Right. So as a, as a consultant and integrator, uh, somebody who specifies and, and, and works with uh, creative types and and management and owners. What does virtual radio mean to you? Where do you see it going? Well, I see it going more and more inside radio studios, right? It's, yeah. uh, it's a hot uh, topic. Uh, where is it going? It's going towards, and depends on market size and sure. uh, resources you have at your station, but it's going towards three to four cameras in each studio, remote well, you, pan tilt. In radio zoom, studios. In radio studios, okay. that's right. Uh, pan tilt zoom, automatic operation, automatic switching based on who's speaking, um, uh, storage, and then uh, whether it's live streaming or you know recording for playback uh, later or some sort of video podcast, that's where it's going and more and more people are doing it and it's becoming more and more affordable and as you just said, there are several companies here that are just, that are showing it. There are some that are not here, but there are some that are here. And I'm sure we'll see those companies in Vegas in April and some other shows. 
but they are making it easier, not just more affordable, but easier to do. You buy a box, you buy an appliance, you plug the cameras in, and it'll take it from there. And if you want to publish to YouTube or Facebook, go into the software, it'll make it happen for you. And, and, um, and it's getting better. I mean, they keep making yeah. it better and they keep making it easier, but that's where I think it's headed. More reachable, usable, uh, more understandable for people. I mean, it used to be, right, five, six, seven years ago, video to radio people like, cameras, I don't know, expensive, uh, what do we do? So everybody ended up with an iPhone in the studio, walking around, and, uh, yeah, and they could do yeah, it from yeah. there. But no, now it's different. And now, the, the next new trend, and I was talking to some people yesterday about it, is IP cameras, which right. some of us are familiar with because our security systems use it right, at the right. radio station. But maybe. I always think of but, delay with an IP camera. Can no, they do production yeah, with it? They, they, they can. They can do live oh. video with it now. Uh, a TriCaster, New Tech, they have a format called NDI that they're trying, yes, to, okay. they're trying to promote throughout there. I met with the guys from Lumens yesterday. They have IP cameras. Um, there's a company out of France that does visual radio called Multicam. Yep. Multicam. Uh, they're now headed towards IP. Okay. So now, now you just have a POE, right? Power Camera's now powered, yep. power reader, yep. a CAT6 cable, your camera into a switch, into a computer with an, ether, uh, with an Ethernet jack on it. Well, it's sort of like we do audio over IP, if sure, you will. Sure. And now you've got your video system and software that they'll supply to you to switch automatically or manually, to insert graphics, to insert the Twitter feed at the bottom and make it look, oh, make yeah. it look like TV. I've seen some visual radio applications. If you didn't know what was spent on it and what box was doing it, you would think it was coming from, you know, well, A&E or something, I mean, yeah. you know, or CNN yeah. or something. It looks good. And that's where I think it's going. I mean, it's and it's getting, it's going to get cheaper. I mean, it's going to get less costly to do as time goes on. So what about this notion of, uh, to you, as we saw yesterday, you have been responsible for designing and specifying right. some pretty awesome studios. What about the notion of having less equipment in the radio station, more of it either in the cloud or in, in a data center owned by the sure. broadcaster, sure. where you're, you're, I don't know, you, the, the, the engineer, there's less engineering and maybe more IT work. Oh, well, that's been going on as a trend in radio and in broadcast. And now the TV guys, by the way, yeah. I was at dinner last night with uh, uh, some of the top television engineers in the country for some big networks that I won't mention. And, and guys who do TV trucks, sports trucks and whatnot, and we were talking about how they're going towards oh. video over IP and, 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 and uh, 2110 is a new standard for in right. audio inside video and everything right. else like that and, and what they're going through. And I kind of chuckled. I said, guys, I've been doing this along with my radio counterparts for like a decade now. <laughs> you guys just figured this out? And uh, they kind of look at me like, oh, you know. But, but, but anyway, so yes, definitely. But the trend, you asked about IT. The trend has been for some years now, right? More IT in in a broadcast facility, yeah. certainly in radio. Yeah. In fact, many of us hire IT people and we train them on the RF that they need to know, oh. but it's easier to find the IT guys. And nearly everything we have at the studio has got an Ethernet jack in the back. Yeah. Our audio's over IP, our phone systems now are generally more and more going over IP with VoIP and SIP, right, everything. So the camera's the next logical step. And as far as having more stuff in the cloud, I mean, absolutely. If you have enough bandwidth at your station, you could end up with some cloud-hosted solutions for, for video. Um, uh, maybe potentially someday for audio. I think if the main studio rule continues on the tra directory that it's got and it yeah. may be eliminated, I think you may see more consolidation of stations um, in a regional or more national type hub sure, centers. And sure. if that happens, I could see more things going to the cloud where it would make more sense. We still need to get more fiber and, and more bandwidth to stations. And we still all need to get comfortable with latency, delay, that that's not going to be an issue, sure. that it's secure, that it cannot be hacked into, right? Because yep, yep, that's, yep. that's a big concern for people. And that the reliability of that faraway cloud server system, supplier, whoever it is, is somebody you trust. Even Amazon goes down. Even Microsoft Azure has gone down. Wow. If you run your station off of that, and some people want things that are touchy-feely that they can get their hands on yeah. and, and yeah. fixing and, 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 and yeah. take care of if it's in the building. But definitely, I think first before we get to all of that in the cloud as it relates to, let's say, visual radio, I think we're going to see more storage in the cloud. And I've met with some companies out here that specialize that in that. I met with a guy yesterday who, who does a lot of video storage and co-locate for big networks and people we've all heard of. And I think you'll see more of that going in the cloud because storage in your facility when it comes to video HD, video, it becomes very, it can become expensive, even today, yeah. it can become expensive, especially if you're collecting video over the next year or two or three. 
obviously, folks, there's a lot to see there's here. A lot to see. We could talk all day. <laughs> we don't want to talk all day about it. That's just a snippet. But for anybody that's watching this, and we hope that they are, if you're thinking about doing it, mm -hmm. Google everything we just said. Yeah. Me media yeah. asset management, yeah. video storage, IP video, NDI format. Take yeah. a look at these things and Google some of these companies out there doing it, like, you know, you know, multicam, um, like Broadcast Bionics, which does a fantastic job, right? We've both been to some studios where they where they are actually in use. And um, uh, Avra and a couple of the other companies out there that you know, Chiron uh, uh, has a has a product now yep. uh, to do this, right? And um, they call it Hagar. How do you pronounce it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how do you pronounce <laughs> it. But Google it. You'll find it. Okay, that Google's your friend. Um, so, yeah, we could talk all day, but it's exciting. And a lot of that is being shown here. Of course, at AES, we also have record producers, mixers, television en engineers that do, you know, yesterday I met the, I met people from Saturday Night Live that do all the music mixing, you know. Oh, wow. These are the kind of people that frequent more so probably the AES side. But plenty that do the video side and then the NAB. Again, like you said, more TV, more video production, uh, more storage, satellite uplinks, RF. I mean, there's every wireless mics. And don't get me started. Don't get you started on microphones. <laughs> the microphones are off the hook here, right? I have an idea. Why don't, yeah. uh, if, if, if you've got a minute, maybe you can take me on a, on a quick tour, show me a couple of highlights, and we're going to bring some of those highlights to you uh, right here. I'm Kirk Harnack at AES in New York City. And we're back live, Kirk Harnack and Chris Tobin. Uh, by the way, I want to mention we're at, uh, uh, we're at a, a little bar, a restaurant called Rattle and Hum. And I understand there's two locations of it here in town. There's the east and west. We're the east location. This okay. is also the the watering hole for uh, Paul Farad and Mary Jo Foley. I have to oh, say that because okay. uh, okay. Andrew would be remiss if we didn't do that. <laughs> uh, this is a, it's a great place if you enjoy beers of of any of many types. Rattle and Hum here in the east. Rattle and Hum East is the place to come. Just, just, just saying. They also have New York City's finest water right here as well. And uh, Scotch ale. It's in Scotch ale with a touch of bourbon. That's amazing stuff. You're watching This Week in Radio Tech. It's Kirk Harnack and Chris Tobin. And we're going to run right into our next interview. Now, you know, we like to talk about audio consoles because broadcast engineers just love to get their hands on audio consoles. Yes, absolutely. Uh, specify them, install them, and so forth. Well, uh, Bill Bennett is with Lavo. And sorry, are you going to say something? Oh, Bill Bennett with Lavo yeah. this, uh, this past week. Uh, did an SBE presentation oh. at the uh, Green Space at WNYC New York Public Radio. Okay. So just just to add that in, uh, the Lavo folks were really cool about coming to uh, New York for the AES, and they also wanted to hook up with SBE. Okay. So if those of you in the audience who are wondering about SBE and say, see, I wonder if it makes any sense, this is a perfect example of why you need to ch stop in at your local chapter. You don't have to be a member. If you are, that's great. But if you're not, you can come on in and check out what's going on. have access to someone like Bill Bennett. Same thing for the national chapter. Exactly. National chapter, we meet the first Thursday of every month, typically at the Piccadilly Cafeteria. But, uh, you can contact me. In the uh, I'm by the program. I'm the program chairman. Yeah, that's right. For the national chapter, so check out your local SBE chapter. Let's get to Bill Bennett here with Lavo. He's going to be explaining about the Ruby console and this um, this marriage between easy operation and complexity under the hood. Let's take a look. Kirk Harnack, along with Bill Bennett with Lavo, Howdy. here at the NAB New York show. Have you ever been to this New York NAB show nah, before? this is beautiful. This is nice. It's, it's pretty It's pretty cool. It's, it's a great scale. It's human yeah. scale. You can get around in a couple of days as opposed to about a week, uh, you know, in Vegas. I think I've walked half the hall here in just a couple hours this morning. Yeah, yeah. and it's a beautiful venue, Javits Center. All the glass and the atrium yes, and stuff. Yes. It's so it, it optimistic. It does. It really does. So we're talking about... It's with the AES show next door, too. Lavo is uh, involved, as are other manufacturers, with the right. notion of virtual radio indeed and you guys kind of got this started with the crystal clear console mm -hmm. and then the relay package for broadcasting mm -hmm. kind of give me your idea a little pie in the sky a little future look what does virtual radio mean to to you bill bennett and to lavo well i mean virtual is a really neat kind of catchphrase that kind of talks about environments where physical faders go away virtual mapping to screens come into play mm -hmm. uh, it, it comes into having an interface that's designed for the workflow of the moment not like hardware that's built for a particular function that can't change. Virtual allows you to remap things. Uh, it, it's software defined. Uh, virtual in our world is software defined routing, software defined processing, uh, and audio mixing, and of course touch interfaces are a big part of that. So does virtual radio help imply that 
you know, we use this word workflows all the time, but, yeah. but that people can work outside of the normal facility? Oh, completely. I mean, with virtual, it, it changes everything. Uh, your studio isn't a fixed location that people have to go to every day. Uh, one fader can be a mic in that room, the next fader can be somebody's microphone in Tokyo, and your main studio can be in Manhattan or something. I mean, it really broadens the space, especially when you're talking about audio that's not baseband on a, you know, audio on a per wire basis, but yeah. IP packets yeah. that are flowing over a VPN. It's this sounds perfect for station staff that don't like each other anymore. <laughs> right, right. I'm not yeah, going to work with him. I'm not going to work yeah, with him. Yeah, no yeah. more chair throwing contests <laughs> in the control room. Absolutely. So audio over IP is a big part of making virtual radio work. Crucial. Talk to me about where what's Ravenna doing and AES67 compatibility and all that. So we're, we're big fans at Lavo of AES67 and the Ravenna standard. Uh, we find with the Audio Engineering Society folks came up with the standard of AES66, AES67, which is a tongue twister. Yes. Uh, and by different definition, it's a, it's a cross-platform open standard, yeah. uh, which uh, those standards, although they take some time to evolve, mean that more companies that adapt uh, they have interoperable communication between their products. You know, maybe we instead of AES67, which is hard to say, yes. we should have called it like Live Wheat Ravenna Dante Net. Magic Wire. <laughs> magic Wire. I just made it yeah, up. Yeah, Magic Wire. That been, oh. okay, I have no a, idea what those other brands are you've mentioned. I, I'm, I'm going to run right over to the AES convention next door and say <laughs> Magic Wire. That's it. Dot org. Let's, uh, Wait a minute. It's probably already probably, pat, yes, patented or yeah, trademarked yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So, cool. sure, so uh, uh, what, can you give us any kind of a look at where we might see Lavo and this technology of virtual radio moving in, in the future? So, I mean, it's kind of a hybrid approach. Uh, obviously, our, whatever our customers want are where we go, right? I mean, we may have these really wonderful ideas, but if a customer doesn't want it, we're not going to go there. So we're evolving in parallel with their needs, uh, but we do see with customer interest uh, in studios that are changing to more like auto mix engines. We have customers that actually don't even have faders now in their studios. They have completely touchscreen environments wow. for mixing. If they mix at all, they use auto mix engines in the background so they don't have to adjust levels at all. Um, and they have play out and traffic systems that are embedded within one single kind of GUI user interface, and all of a sudden the studio changes. And you can have hosts that are on wireless mics walking around the studio and headsets, and you don't have to worry about a physical table anymore. Uh, and you can interact more with their guests, and it becomes more human. The hardware goes away. Yeah, I like that idea. I Thanks. do, I do. That's my idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, it's a, great, it's a great future we're looking for, looking at, and Lavo's part of that. Thanks, Bill Bennett, for talking to us. Thanks, Kirk. A real pleasure. Appreciate you coming by. I'm Kirk Harnack at the NAB Show in New York City. And Chris Tobin and Kirk Harnack back here at Rattle and Hum Bar and Restaurant in New York City on 33rd Street. Uh, yeah, 33rd between 5th and Madison Avenue. Yeah. We're right at the heart of Midtown. We're having a good time. We're actually, I wish I could show it to you. We're sitting in the front window... And there's actually not a window there. It's just we're looking at 33rd Street. It's, it's right out a, in front of us. It's bistro style. Bistro. We're right on the sidewalk. <laughs> so right. 33rd, just traffic back and forth, pedestrians, tourists, you name it. We had a few people doing selfies. We're actually in the background. Ah, yeah, we are the yeah. backdrop to several <laughs> New York City tourist selfies. There you go. Okay, who would have thought Twerk would actually be part of a background? So coming up next, I met a friend of yours Yes. Uh, at, the sh at the NAB side of the show yesterday. This guy is so cool, Eli Mendez. Yeah. Yes, actually, I worked with him. Great guy, knows his stuff. Yeah. Um, thinks like definitely out of the box on many things. Knows his, his stuff, and it's uh, it's really cool. It's good. It's good stuff. And Eli's a big fan of this show, so he's got to be a good guy. Yeah. No, he is. No, no. Trust me. It's he he gets it. He gets. It. So that's coming up in just a minute. An interview with Eli Mendez on the show floor, and he's by the way, if we didn't mention, he's with United Stations Radio Network. How many of you engineers, how many of you program directors and disc jockeys out there take programs that are produced by United Stations, a, a network that was started by Dick Clark? Dick Clark. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. United Stations Radio Network actually has a lot of programming that's unique. Yeah. That people have no idea. Like, we saw that show. Oh, and they have it on in New York City. There are many before Eli. And it's a wild operation. It is. Matter of fact, a first a person I used to work with at ABC is now I think he may still be there. He was in affiliate sales, and when I went up go up to see him, we were talking. He's like, "You won't believe who we're dealing with." And he named rattled some names off. We're like, "Wow!" And he goes, "Yeah, we distribute all that." We're like, "What?" He goes, "Yeah, nobody even knows we exist, but we distribute some of the <laughs> highest profiles there are." Yeah. And, and Eli on the engineering side, he's got the best gig. Like, God bless him for that. It's a, it's a great situation. I was radio a little bit with the M 1981 or so. Yeah. Uh, 
carrying stuff from the United States. Yes, yeah, yeah. they've been. A, it's been a, a while, and people have no idea. It's like uh, phrase under the radar. Yeah, yeah. United Stations Radio Network, USRN, and we'll, we'll talk to Eli about what shows he's doing and what technologies that he's putting to use to make his job better and to make it better for uh, his employees. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But right now, I want to tell you about our sponsor, the Telos Alliance, and their product, the Telos VX. The SIP VoIP, Session Initiation Protocol, and Voice over IP. And we can keep that picture up if you want to. Um, this is the gateway that goes between that world of telephony and the world of professional gas infrastructure. Because on one side, it has two ports. It has a WAN port and a LAN port. The WAN side goes to the telco world, whoever is your supplier of, of over IP. And by the way, since it's on a network, you can have on there your local telephone system, whether it's from Cisco or Avaya or whoever it's from. And if it does SIP, it'll talk to this. And then it'll also talk to you know tr uh, lines coming in from asterisk or extensions coming in from a cloud-based PBX. Lots of ways to use the Telos VX, and you can use all of those at the same time. On the other side, the, the LAN side, is your professional um, live wire connections to uh, X nodes, to other devices, to audio consoles that speak live wire. And so you can bring in these phone calls with as perfect audio quality as is possible. Now, to this mix, if you simply add an asterisk PBX, you can do some amazing things. And this is where TV stations come into this mix. TV stations are using the Telos VX to talk, to, to provide um, an interface for their IFBs, for their reporters, for their photogs, for their truck operators to call in. They can just call into one number. They're assigned a slot in the asterisk, and then they're assigned then a channel on the Telos VX. These can be grouped together using um, our, our Pathfinder software and different TV stations around the country and even some networks are now using this to, first of all, provide fantastic activity between reporters in the field and the, the producers at the TV station. Producers, uh, assignment desk editors, directors, and also they bring in their photogs and their truck operators. So all this really comes together. They can talk to each other quite easily. You can connect this to existing um, um, intercom systems and existing audio consoles. Uh, so you get real contribution quality uh, from all of this. Let's say you have a VIP caller. Let's say the mayor of Atlanta calls into your TV station and uh, calls the front desk. And he wants to get on the air and say something about an event or a, a, an issue that's going on. You can transfer that call into the Telos VX. The news department can easily take this call and put it directly on the air uh, with whoever your VIP is, or maybe you have an on-the-scene uh, witness to a news event. They call it. They don't know what number to call. They call the TV station, and bam, you can put them on the air with the Telus VX. Chris, I understand you had some VX experience with the television broadcaster as well. Yes, in uh, New England, there's a, an operation that uses the VX system, and they, they wanted to have the versatility and the simplicity of being able to go from the traditional 1A2 systems we're all familiar with yeah. and wiring into the T1R1 tip ring of a phone to get the dial tone that you needed with sip and with the new ip uh, telephony i'll call it you can do stuff that's so simple and straightforward something as simple as this device here oh that's your new ifb this is my new ifb and that's also can also be your high quality audio that's correct yeah and the nice thing is about it you know if you, you mix you combine the the vx with the telos ip intercom system you now have a combination of communications networking that is beyond anything we're all familiar with back in the day of the Elgin couplers. Remember those? Oh, gosh. Where, where you yeah. dial in and connect and uh, have an IAB and it's a phone coupler and router was fed to that and hopefully you got the right route and you had the right phone number. Now it's all gone. Now it's you just dial directly and you have an assigned um, IP number, we'll call it. You know, it could be anything you want to call it, actually. And, and now all of a sudden you have communications beyond what you had before. If you as a producer can talk to a dozen folks on the production and know that the right people are getting what they have to. Easy IFB, easy mix minus from your console, and then real easy to interrupt with your uh, intercom system. So the director, news desk, the assignment desk, 
producers can all can communicate very yeah. easily. You can also create a group. So if you need to talk to all the photogs in the field at the same time, bam, one button and you're talking to all the photographers. If you need to talk to all the reporters, hey, we need to we need to move to this story. Let's see what angles we get on this story. You can do that. So, uh, so, yeah, so, but, and don't forget, see that we're talking all these wonderful things. Everybody goes, oh, this is all well and good, but you can go back to your business office, yeah, to your business people and say, yeah. look, back in the day, we had 27 Elgin couplers to create a group so that all of the photox could dial into a number, individual POTS numbers, remember, yeah. that had a monthly recurring cost, which now that monthly recurring cost is a one time cost and everything else is IP. So I can have my 27 photogs worldwide connected to a group call and coordinate something and have it on the air, whether it be web or on the terrestrial method, in minutes. Could you do that with pods back in the day? Come on, guys. Let's let's think about this now. I, I know there's a few about to go, oh, yes. Okay, so VX and the Telos IP, code, uh, IP intercom system, that's even better. That's the best of the two worlds. But if you have to do just phone SIP, VX is the way to go. We're out of time, but I will mention the ROI. You can go from a, a monthly phone bill of a thousand or two thousand or twenty five hundred a month and get down to a phone bill of typically three hundred dollars a month and maybe down in the in the neighborhood of fifty or sixty bucks a month for all your phone lines. Yes. VoIP can do that for you depending on what level of VoIP you get. So thanks a lot to the Telos Alliance and the Telos VX for sponsoring this week in Radio Tech. I really appreciate it. And if, if you're in the TV business, check this out. Talk to one of us at, at Telos, and we'll be glad to help you out. All right, back to Eli Mendez. We've got an interview with Eli. This guy is so excited about technology and making our jobs as engineers easier. Let's roll it with Eli. Hey, it's Kirk Harnack at NAB New York. I'm at the Telos Alliance booth, the TV Solutions booth. Look who I've run into, the Director of Engineering for United Stations Radio Networks. I've known about these guys for my whole radio career, starting in, I don't know, 1980 or so. It's uh, Eli Mendez. Hi, Eli. Hi, how are you? Good, good. So you're the Director of Engineering over there. Yes. And uh, you guys have a few studios. You produce uh, national programming. Absolutely. We provide content for over 6,000 radio stations across the country. Wow. <laughs> 6,000 affiliates? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So uh, what's a popular show that people may have uh, heard of? Or what, what's a what's something that you guys do that? Alice Cooper. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Nights with Alice Cooper. Also, yep. uh, Hard Drive XL. Just oh, yeah. mentioned a couple. Okay, okay, cool. So a lot of these are pre-produced shows that, that you distribute. Awesome. Um, so you were talking about your studios there and the flexibility that audio over IP gives you in reconfiguring things, doing what you need to do on short notice. Talk to me a bit about the tech. Absolutely. Uh, I always look for technology that's going to allow us to advance or go to the next level as needed, if needed, when yeah. needed. Yeah. And uh, uh, the products that uh, Telos allows us to have allows us to do that. I mean, we're able to move up when we need to, how we need to, how we need to expand. So we're in a phase right now where we're looking to expand, looking for the future of things in our studios. And of course, uh, everything that uh, Telos provides us allows us to do that. So um, we're very fortunate in that one of our engineers, Greg Shea, was a co-inventor of audio over IP, of, of live wire. Awesome. So we're in a good, a good seat there, but I, it, it's, it's a real pleasure to hear you talk about how that technology helps you do your job. Absolutely. Are you guys doing more and more stuff over IP, maybe uh, remotes or configuration or just monitoring your systems? Yes, uh, and as broadcasting, well, broadcasting is already moving towards that totally. Yeah. I mean, they've been yeah. moving for a few years, but it seems like everything is gonna be IP-based in the future. And uh, I, I have nothing uh, bad to say about that. I know I know some engineers are a little bit hesitant, hmm. especially those that come from the old school that you know are used to XLRs and used to heavy cables and having a, a rack room look like it's spaghetti wire everywhere. <laughs> but with, with the- You've uh, seen my <laughs> rack room, huh? <laughs> <laughs> with, with the new technology you have, thinner wires, uh, you have less wiring. Uh, I mean, you're, you're basically putting everything through ethernet cables and are able to uh, uh, minimize the yeah. amount of wiring, the amount of time that it would take to do all of that. And with uh, other cool inventions, like uh, I just saw another invention over there. The, the company's been around for a long time, but they have the, uh, the raised floors uh -huh. and they do it in such a way that, uh, I mean, small cablings through there, 
piece of cake nowadays. So even building studios with the newer technology uh, allows you to do it in a more efficient, faster way, in a more economical way, and a better way. You know, my friend and your previous colleague, Chris Tobin, <laughs> he and I were talking just yesterday, and I said, Chris, have you ever heard of a facility that removes more weight in wire <laughs> than the new equipment weighs that they're putting in? He said, absolutely. absolutely. We usually don't think of studio refurbishing in terms of weight of right. wire, but yes. <laughs> That's right. So The amount of wiring you're going to get rid of with the newer technology that just allows you to have smaller bulks of cable going yeah. through the floor or wherever. It's just amazing. And technology is now at a level where I'm comfortable as an engineer employing a lot of what that is. Uh, because years ago, things were still in the experimental stage and you really didn't know how things were going to go. But in today's world, when you have like, you know, I'm just going to mention uh, one name, a Comrex Access, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you take a box like that that you can utilize and put anywhere. It, it, and now they have a newer product called the Opal. Opal, yeah. It is awesome. Yeah. Awesome technology. Yeah. So all of that technology now is kind of stabilized and kind of standardized. And uh, what Telos is doing with everything else is helping broadcasters do their job more efficiently, more cohesively, and more importantly, faster. Yep, so much of this stuff just connects to audio over IP and bam. Yep. Hey, Eli, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, Kirk. Eli Mendez from United Stations Radio Network here in New York City. I'm Kirk Harnack for the Telos Alliance. It's such a pleasure to uh, to talk to Eli, and because uh, I've been, uh, and the, my station's been airing USRN programs oh, yeah. for years. Oh, you know, Eli's a good guy. Good people, knows the stuff. He and I work together at a small company uh, with a large uh, name for radio <laughs> syndication. I'll leave it at that for now. He'll know what I'm talking about. So let's talk about your experience at AES and NAB. Chris, yes. you got to walk the halls a bit more than I did. Yes. Um, I was stuck interviewing people here and there. So uh, what, what did you see that, that tripped your trigger? Well, one of the things I came across, and Eli mentioned it with the floor, uh, raised floor approach, a yes. company called Free Access. It's actually the word free, and A-X-E-Z. And um, they've been around for a while, and I've actually talked to them a couple of times. And uh, a friend of mine did some work with them and did an installation for a studio. It's the wildest approach to raised floor. Now, most of us traditionally think of waste, raised floor as this height between my hands, say, figure six to eight inches in height. Right. This system is actually about three to four inches and creates channels throughout the floor that you can run cabling. It's the wildest thing. It doesn't require any crazy installation. It works really well. Huh. It makes total sense. And I think the folks at Fox TV built a complete facility in L.A., one of their TV facilities. So it's, it's pretty cool. you got to check it out. It's free access. It's uh, free A-X-E-Z. Okay. And they got all kinds of stuff. The other stuff I looked at was also uh, spatial audio. Now, you say spatial audio. What the devil is that? Immersive audio. Oh, it's the... It's the point source audio, now objective uh, files. So I'm sitting where I'm at right now with you, and we can be listening to audio that's a sweet spot, and we can hear things on the left, the right, the center, above, behind. That's immersive audio. Now, it's still still working really pretty much with a single person as the point of reference, but they're getting closer to the, as, a, as Dan from Skywalker Audio told me on Wednesday, we're getting close to the holodeck on Star Trek. <laughs> I kid you not, that's a quote. And I was with Duke Marcos, who's another sound engineer, who does a lot of post-production work. He's worked with Skywalker folks and others. And we we're all three of us just having a good time over coffee. And he's like, look, we're getting there, but it's not there yet. But we're moving toward that holodeck. So I have to say that. I have to give him credit. Dan at Skywalker, that's what I'm going to say. Now I'm going to give his last name. And then there's the gaming audio sessions. Okay. Now, everybody, I, 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 a friend of mine was like, Gaming audio. What the devil are you doing there? It's huge. Isn't it? First of all, let's 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 step back to the business side of, of, of what we do in broadcasting. Who's your audience? Okay, what's your radio station music format? What are you doing? What's it? What's your age group? 18, 24, 18, 34, 34, 54. Okay, right. Guess what? Gaming is a very big industry. Yeah. And if you yeah. understand how the gamers think and do stuff, or what they hear, then you should be thinking the same for your radio station. So that's what I say. You know, if you can't get it. Get out now. Okay, move on. Get somebody else in your job because it's ridiculous. The gaming industry is huge. Now, this show that you're watching, right, you're watching or listening to is produced with uh, certain software for video switching and, and production on a gaming machine. Oh, uh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> okay. So there's the connection. I'm just saying that because I, I went to several sessions and heard stuff. I'm like, 
Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting approach. And why would I say this? Because if you're shooting video at your radio station for your website, you need to understand the audio approach and why people are excited by hearing what they hear. Very important things to consider. Now, there's another organization called Here and Now out of Kansas City, and they do a lot of radio theater. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sue Scissor and Dave Shin. And they did a whole presentation on binaural audio with Macbeth or deconstructing Macbeth. Okay. And you say, what the devil's binaural audio? If you're listening to me right now, you're using binaural audio. That's how we hear things, stereoscopic audio. It's audio in the phase relationship, timing and phase. And when, when you record something binaurally, you're creating a similar experience that you and I hear every day. Okay. You know, you walk through the streets of your local town, your city, wherever you are, we hear things in a certain live environment. You go to a studio, it's dead. That's why our brains go berserk. You're like, what the devil happened? By Nor brings back, all of a sudden your brain goes, oh, okay, I'm cool with that, I get it. So they did a whole presentation on binaural audio using a, uh, a, a head, uh, not, not the Fritz head, it was another company out of Germany, okay. and with DPA capsules to, dis to demonstrate when, when the uh, uh, theater, the radio theater folks are reading the scripts, they walk around the head to give it a spatial effect. It's spatial audio. Understand how this works, and now your radio station could be that much better. Why? Because 90% of your audience, believe it or not, is listening to your radio yeah. station on this device. The device I'm holding is a smartphone for those of you who are listening, not watching. So how do you listen to your smartphone? Do you use the hands-free? I doubt it. You use those earbuds. Oh, now, yeah. if you create a binaural spatial effect in your earbuds for your radio station, guess what? You stand out among the competition. Ooh. When you stand out among the competition, what does that do? It generates revenue. At that point, now you're on your own. I'm not going to give you any secrets there. That will cost you if you call me. So these are things to consider. That's why you go to AES. AES NAB makes it even better because then you, you go to AES, learn that stuff, and you go to NAB and go, hey, Telos or Axia, hey, Wheatnet or Avo, how do I create what I just learned across the hall? And then you got people like Bill Bennett or Kerr or Phil Owens at Wheatstone going, uh, good question. Here's how you can do it. Now you're on your own after that. I'm not going any further. <laughs> but you see how they all connect? This, this is the understanding you have to create. I just want to make sure I got all my lists, DF Gaming Order, metadata, right? The big thing now is metadata with HD radio. Right. Glenn Walden from CBS, right. formerly of CBS, is now a consultant to CBS Radio Corporation. Did a panel with uh, Stu Buck from Optic Palm. Oh, yeah. With yeah. TTS. Yeah. Talking about how to manipulate metadata to your benefit. So you create a spatial audio experience, user experience, create a metadata experience, combine the two, and that's it. You stand among the pack. And think about it. That would be like Bob Hope and Bing Crosby back in the day of early television when live TV was literally live and things would happen, like the arc lamps would explode and a dark light would happen, and Bob would just simply continue on with the script. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, there was no yeah. script. <laughs> this is what we're doing today. We're fast forward today. So, I'm, yes, I'm referencing some old, outdated stuff, and those of you in the audience below the age of 45 have no idea what I'm talking about. You can do a search engine and find out about Bing Crosby and Bob Hope and the early days of television. And trust me, the Pepsi <clears throat> commercials were great. <laughs> All right. That, that's your report. That's my report. <laughs> I have one little thing to report, and that is a product that I came across a few months ago at the uh, podcast movement convention in Anaheim, California. And uh, so, you, you know, I, 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 there's something about wireless mics I love. We're on a wired mic right now, but here's a wireless mic from Samson. Now, a lot of you know Samson as a maker of, I would say, value-priced audio products. But look at the, 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 the of course, there's, there's lots of these on the market, lots of these. But Chris but is going to hold up something there's else. There's only one of these. This is the receiver, and the receiver straps on to, the, to your cell phone. See? And the receiver is a dual receiver. It can it has two RF receivers in there, and it can pick up two microphones. And the microphone is available not only in a handheld variety, but also in a belt pack with a lavalier mic. And that means you can conduct an interview with two microphones, whether they're handheld or lavalier, and pick them up on this little receiver right here and then feed that into your smartphone or your DSLR or whatever you're recording on with video. Uh, it will, by the way, feed into the smartphone digitally 
or with analog. So there's a USB output here. They provide you with a cable to go to a lightning connector or to a micro USB on an Android device. So either way, you've got connectivity. I happen to just have the, an the analog connector right here. And the analog connector is indeed set up as a four pin, you know, four ring connector uh, to deal properly with, to fool the phone into thinking that it has uh, earbuds and a microphone attached. So that's really cool. And it's, it's priced, uh, I want to say about $250 or $300 or so for a set. Uh, you can buy extra microphones and you can buy extra uh, belt packs and, and, and lapels. So um, I want to thank Samson for uh, showing us this, introducing to this product. I saw it a few months ago as a brand new product that wasn't shipping yet, and now it's shipping. So pretty cool for doing you know, easy remote production. Uh, I shot a couple of videos already with this picker wireless mic setup. So that's what I saw. I, I think that's the best. Especially that, with that is two receivers, best. and you can either mix them or have them feed separately into your, your phone. If you're a podcaster, it's yeah. two receivers. Did you hear me say it? Two receivers. I mean, yeah. host, guest, two yeah, receivers, yeah. form factor, form yeah. factor, smartphone, and a small little attachment. Okay, uh, get, get on the program here, folks. Also, if you want to, uh, they have a, an adapter to put this receiver into a hot shoe uh, so you can, you can plug it onto your DSLR. Oh and, my and, and mount it there. So now you can do video with something as simple as a two-channel mixing device. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, now for the broadcasters, this is a no-brainer. I shouldn't even be trying to pitch you on this, but for podcasters, go for it. Okay. Broadcasters is given. This is like a travel expense budget item. You know the cost. Just just do it. Podcasters, it's a serious investment. It'll pay off. All right. So we got two more quick videos to do. Uh, first of all, we're going to hear from. Um, John Humphrey with Hitachi. Now, I know this is a radio podcast this week in Radio Tech, but here's something interesting for all of us, and that has to do with the way we watch television. And John Humphrey with Hitachi is going to make the case that HDR on television is more important than 4K video. Let's hear from John Humphrey. Kirk Harnack here at the NAB show in New York. And it's a pretty amazing show. I just got here. Look who I ran into, John Humphrey. Hello, John. Good morning. Hello, Kirk. Good to see you. John, you spoke at an uh, SBE meeting at our Nashville SBE chapter. Unfortunately, I was out of town and couldn't be there, but you were there to talk about HD, HDR. Right. What is that? We have been advocating uh, HD, and that is 1080-60p, high dynamic range for about a year and a half. I've traveled all over the country making presentations. We now have that presentation on the Hitachi website. Okay. And um, our position is that it's a much bigger bang for the buck using HD HDR. And in fact, it has a more visually appealing picture than UHD with standard dynamic range. Give me the, uh, the short uh, version here because I, to me in photography, HDR means taking a wide dynamic range and compressing it to something that I can print out on a piece of paper or look at my computer screen. HDR in television, does it mean the same thing or something a little bit different? Than Absolutely that? not. Okay. One of the first misconceptions that I talk about is video HDR is very different from still image HDR. Okay. In still image, you take multiple exposures and you process those to get the best of those exposures. Okay. In video, we're cranking out 60 frames per second. There is no time to do that. Okay. And so our way of doing HDR is different, but it has a similar effect. So we see, uh, what, what do we see on the screen as a result of HDR? Brighter brights, darker darks, or do we see a, 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 com a compressed image of the, you know, the, the, the bright to dark? Well, thanks for asking that, because another common misconception is that HDR is a brighter picture. I want to clarify that the average picture level is the same. Okay. It has brighter peaks, but 
the picture is not on average brighter. That's what you get with vivid or dynamic on your TV, okay. and that's okay. not HDR. Most of the improvement in the picture performance in HDR is in the mid and lower levels of the picture okay. where you see detail in the dark areas. Uh, that is really what HDR is about. This is pretty difficult for a lot of digital photography is to see those details in the darks. That's one thing that people figure out how to, how to fix in their digital cameras, uh, video or still, and so that's part of what HDR fixes. Yeah? Yes, uh, it's an interesting fact that evolution prepared us to see a tiger hiding in the shadows. Our eyes are much more sensitive to mid and dark areas than they are to bright and brighter. Okay. So okay. that's why we allocate more bits in our camera to resolve those areas of the picture. So uh, Hitachi's proposal is that you actually get a bigger bang for the buck with better video when you look at 1080 HDR than if you just go to 4K non-HDR. That's exactly right. And that's been proven, and it's not just me saying it. There's lots of industry professionals yeah. that back that up. So if people want to see what this looks like or hear a better explanation, they go to the Hitachi website. Can you yeah. tell me, uh, Hitachi.com? Yes, I have the my presentation that I made all over the country. Finally got recorded in Washington, D.C., ah, and uh, it's posted there. There's two parts. Uh, introduction to HDR, which is eight minutes and is for everybody. Uh, the second part is called Advanced HDR, and that's pretty much for industry professionals. Okay. It gets, cool. gets a little tough at places. I'm eager to learn more about it. So sorry I missed the SBE meeting, but I'm glad we'll be able to watch that on that's online. Right. Yes. Cool. Yeah. We'll try to have a link here in the show notes. I'm Kirk Harnack at the NAB New York Convention in New York City. And thanks to John Humphrey for giving us that information about HDHDR. I think it's great. <laughs> if you're a radio station doing video, that's what you should be learning. Yeah. yeah. I, I know a lot of folks are like hot on the track of 4K cameras, 8K cameras. They've got to do 8K and 4K. It's like we're not there yet as far as distribution. But the HDR technology, and I've read about it from the Simpty folks, definitely makes total sense. I mean, go for it. For a radio station to make non-traditional revenue opportunities, that's the way to go. So one other subject that we, we see in audio is audio processing either real-time, live, or file-based processing? File-based, yes. And so many workflows now need file-based processing. They may not know it yet, but they do. Right, file-based pro processing, you know, you have the LUFS meters and stuff, yeah. and yeah. you have programming that comes into your facility, and you have all these shows, and all of a sudden you're like, well, how do we get them all to the right level? That's how you can do it through file-based processing. So I spoke, here's a quick interview. I spoke with Larry Deeds of the Telos Alliance, talking about both the ways of doing this processing, audio processing. Let's take a listen to Larry real quick. What is the TV Solutions Group? Well, it's, it's a great name because it pretty well describes it. Hi, I'm Kirk Harnack for the TELUS Alliance, talking to Larry Dees. Hi, Larry. How you doing? I'm doing great. Yourself? Good. I'm, I'm good. We're, we're here at the NAB show in New York. It's the first NAB New York show I've ever been to. Oh, yeah. Welcome. Well, well thank you. <laughs> so, um, uh, you, you do some sales with... I try. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you talk to broadcasters? Uh, broadcasters, uh, anyone that uh, ha is involved in content delivery, because these days, using the term television is really not quite right, ah, because yeah. television yeah. implies that it's over-the-air broadcast, yeah. and there is so much more these days. It's content delivery, because you might be looking at it on Facebook, yeah. you might be watching uh, on your mobile device or on a tablet, so it's all kinds of content, content delivery yeah. would be yeah. probably the best way to describe it. So let's, let's mention a couple of uh, areas that you help broadcasters with, and one sure. of those, of course, a name we all know is Linear Acoustic. Right. Uh, what does Linear Acoustic do, and how does that help broadcasters who are making content? Uh, well, the primary thing that we do is uh, real-time loudness management. Okay. So there are, uh, of course, legal standards in most countries in terms of what the level of loudness is and is acceptable. And so it's a matter of making certain that all of the content from program to promo back to content is uh, a more level process. Right. And so what we do is we have our aero processors, and we do that in real time. Oh. Uh, the aero processors also involve 
our UpMax product, which is a stereo to 5.1 uh, okay. process, okay. and uh, we feel pretty good about it, and in fact, NBC has used it since 2008 for all of their Olympics broadcasts. Wow. wow. So, now that's linear acoustic, yeah, and yeah. we're in the real-time loudness processing. But there's a different, uh, this Minnetonka brand. Tell us about that, because that's that's where so much, I think, of our work is, our workflows are going to what Minnetonka does. Right. Minnetonka Audio Software uh, has an enterprise uh, product line, and the primary product is Audio Tool Server. And so, whereas with Linear Acoustic, we have real-time loudness processing, mm -hmm. with Minnetonka, we have file-based loudness processing. Okay. And we've also integrated Linear's UpMax processing, and we have a wide variety of other processes that we do within a file file-based, fully automated workflow. Does this uh, uh, audio tool server, got the name server in there, does this happen at a broadcaster's or content creator's location or up in the cloud somewhere? Uh, both. Oh, okay. Uh, there, there are options. Either, either you, way. You can go either way, okay. and we're working on a hybrid combination where the cloud is a spillover when the work gets uh, larger than what you have on premise uh, or failover. So it's a combination of both. Although I would say, you know, the vast majority of our clients have their systems on premise, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and uh, it's generally a part of a larger workflow. So if they're working in a video concentric environment, they may have one of the major video workflow management solutions. Solutions like Telestream Vantage or Harmonic uh, Carbon or uh, Dillette mm -hmm. or uh, Root 6 or Aspera or pretty much all of the majors, and we integrate with them into that larger automated oh. workflow. Okay, okay, gotcha. And the last thing I want to ask you about is what I know as a radio product, it's the Telos VX system, handling voice over IP for multiple studios, multiple phone lines, and yet we find TV broadcasters are using this. Well, because fundamentally there's no difference between radio and television when it comes to taking calls and being able to send those calls elsewhere. Yeah. Additionally, uh, IFB uh, interruptible foldback is a critical part of television. So every cameraman, every every anchor that's on camera, uh, they, a producer might need to tell them something. And VX fits into that, as well as, uh, as Mark has mentioned, our new intercom system. All of that is of a piece and connects yeah. via yeah. AES 67 and Livewire Plus. And reporters in the field, photogs, truck operators, that they can all be part of that VX. And one of the huge benefits is cutting the cost of phone lines down to voice over IP prices, which uh, the studies I've done indicate anywhere from an 18-month to a 36-month uh, return on investment uh, in, in that regard. So you can get better communications with your remote crews and pay for it all in uh, three years or so. Uh, absolutely. The difference between uh, $20 a month for an analog line versus 15 cents a month <laughs> for yes. VoIP. So yeah. yeah, it's pretty clear uh, in terms of the return on investment. And, and the the other point is that it increases the quality of the audio oh, because yeah. you have contribution level audio at that point. So, uh, yeah, we're finding lot, well, we're finding lots of our television broadcasters already have Telos hybrids. So this is a natural progression for them cool. to be able to handle that many more lines within a very small number of rack spaces. So it makes a lot of sense. So if you create content and that includes video, you want to check out these uh, product lines: Linear Acoustic, Minnetonka Audio, and the Telos V. Uh, uh, finding good uses in TV. You can do all that at telosalliance.com. And if you're anywhere in Larry Deed's sales area, you'll get to talk to him and put his knowledge to work for you, right? Happy to. <laughs> I'm Kirk Harnack at NAB New York for the Telos Alliance. And it's Kirk and Chris here at uh, This Week in Radio Tech, episode 369. Thanks for tuning in. Tell your friends. We are live from Rattle and Hum. Rattle and Hum in New York City on uh, East 33rd Street. Uh, Rattle and Hum East. Let's make sure we're clear about that. Uh, okay. And I have to also, when I talk about Rattle and Hum, it's also the, the, the place where if you are lucky, you'll get to see Mary Jo Foley and uh, Paul Theron. For those other non-broadcast, but broadcast-influenced uh, uh, podcasts. Yeah, if, well, if you watch any podcast to do with uh, Windows, like Windows Weekly. Windows Weekly or yeah. Tech News Today with... Uh, with uh, both Rod yes. and Andrew, yep. uh, this is the place that a lot of a lot of those great decisions are made. <laughs> All the meetups are, are taking place. That's right. It's good stuff. Trust me, it's good. And rattling home. Hey, uh, we're going to conclude our show in just a few minutes with a couple of tips for the week. 
So stick around for that. Right now, I want you to hear from our sponsor, Lavo, and my friend, Bill Bennett. Hey guys, this is Bill Bennett with Lavo. Kirk Harnack has been asking me about our Ruby console, so I wanted to take a couple minutes and tell you all about it. It's a pretty new console for us. We really love it. It's a, it's a unique product because it's a hybridization of an analog and physical world designed and oriented also towards the future or future of virtual broadcasting. And it includes an AOIP environment like AES-67, so in Ravenna. Um, the physical surface is something that your engineers are probably pretty used to with, with physical faders and on-off buttons, um, you know, PFL and Q, stuff like that. And because it's a software-defined console, all these buttons and all these OLEDs are completely relegendable based on the configuration for the board, which can change even by the hour if you want. You can have a talk show, a radio show, whatever you need. Uh, another cool thing is you can even turn off some of these channels if you don't need them enabled for different smaller shows. We understand sometimes you have a board op that's a skilled engineer, you want to give them more capabilities. You also may have an operator that's also the host and maybe not so technically inclined. A lot of those other abilities then can be taken off. One of the other really cool features of all level products includes auto mix. That's a uh, concept where each of the channels that you add into the auto mix engine mix themselves automatically, quiet the channels that aren't getting audio activity on them. You can rank each of the channels based on priority so hosts can get a higher level of ranking. Guests and perhaps some playout can have lower levels or telephone hybrids or codecs. So when your host talks, they come through and the other folks are muted down as you program the system. So we even have customers in other countries that don't even use faders anymore. Truly faderless mixing environments on the air. So it's a pretty awesome engine. Uh, because this is a, a hybrid physical system and virtual system, uh, you don't have to necessarily have a physical fader. We also have entirely touch-oriented mixing environments right here. Uh, based on our earlier technologies such as uh, the uh, crystal clear and our more, uh, more modern virtual radio mixing products called Relay. Uh, which is also really neat, when you have uh, engineers that have to tweak something at 3 o'clock in the morning, you don't have to get in the car and drive back to the studio. You can just go online to our VizTool environment and tweak the product remotely. So that makes your uh, 3 o'clock in the morning uh, hosts a little more comfortable. Um, but yeah, we're big fans of touch environments and touch screen environments, uh, and we realize that the workflow of a studio is changing. And so that's why this console is designed to, to support both legacy environments and future-oriented environments. Uh, we also realize you have different needs. You may have a small production studio where you need maybe four faders or something much bigger. This stuff can scale up to 60 faders, so they get pretty big. Thanks for checking out our products. You can find out more at lawo.com. That's Lavo. And I'm Bill Bennett. Back to you, Kirk. And thanks a lot to Lavo, lawo.com slash twert. I'd appreciate it personally if you would add the slash twert. When you go to lavo.com, lawo.com slash twert, it'll take you right to the page that has all their radio-oriented products. Because Lavo makes a lot of things, including huge consoles for big live event venues and remote trucks. So if you want to check out the radio stuff, lavo.com slash twert. All right, Chris Tobin and I are just wrapping up the show here with a tip of the week from each of us. Chris, have you got something ready for us? Yes, I do. I actually have a, a Digigram product. Oh. It's, uh, it allows you to put a dynamic microphone into your uh, smartphone device. Okay, there it is. It's a real simple attachment. It has a, it has a tip ring ring sleeve uh, connector. Cool. Uh, has line level in, has headphone out. Did I say line level in? That's right. Really? Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. See, they, everyone's thinking, oh, I know what that is. That's a... That's the standard product A. No, no, no. This is the product that has a line in and the XLR for the microphone. Okay, okay. So my microphone is here, and I have a line input. And you say to yourself, what the hell is the point of that? Well, if I'm a reporter, a journalist, or somebody doing a show, and I have audio I want to contribute to what I'm doing, I can mix it right on site. So what is my parts count? Smartphone, digigram cable, and my maybe, say, MP3 playout device or whatever you have. I'm off and off, off and running. So that's what I have for as a tip. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I've been using it for a long time. And I have to thank the guys at, Pat, at Digigram and Pascal for uh, actually letting me have this and trying it out. About two years ago, they said, can you give this a try and tell us what you think of it? And I said, well, what do you want me to do? They said, well, whatever you normally do with stuff that manufacturers give you. I said, okay. <laughs> so here's what I did. <laughs> and I said, you know what? It, it works pretty good. I, I'm surprised. <laughs> and they're like, what did you just do? I said, well, I just do what most people do in the field. Whack it. Right? I mean, how many times do you think people are going to take this and be very kick gloves about it? I doubt it. So it, it works really cool. Any idea what kind of money that costs? Oh, goodness. I think it's somewhere in the order of uh, 150 bucks. Okay. You know, okay. 100 US and dollars. there's a game control down here. What is that? 
They had the gain controls for the microphone in and out. Okay. Have, uh, one, two, three, three positions. And again, remember when you're dealing with these devices, and not just Digigram, but then many others on the market, the gain is based on what the microphone output is capable of. So, yeah. so you know, like this Rode broadcast has a certain output in, in um, you know, millivolt pascals. And then there's a, you know, Neumann U87 has a different output or an SM58 or an SM57 or an M58 buyer. So make sure you understand the output level of your microphone before you panic and go, there's not enough gain. No, the, the idea behind this is to give you a little bit of gain, not 30 dB. Right, right. So if you have a high output gain microphone, you'll probably have to reduce it. If you have a low output, but just above the threshold of use, this should work just fine. Gotcha. So I just have to do that caveat because everybody assumes you can take a cheap $2 microphone and go, oh, yeah, that'll work great. No, not happening. But an SM58 will work very well with this. Oh, okay, okay. So that's from Digigram. Digigram, yes. And they call it the what? I actually I don't know what they call it. Okay. There's no name on it. It's just oh the Q. Sorry. The Q, Q mic. It's the Q, Q. mic. I oh, forgot. Yeah. That's right. Pascal's gonna send me an email. Go. What are you doing? I thought I told you the information. It's the Q mic. It's an adapter. It's standard smartphone. Tip ring ring sleeve. So make sure I have that right. Yep, yep, so don't sleeve. confuse anybody. And then, yes, there is an XLR. And yes, it is designed to take a beating. <laughs> Okay. Well, there I'm, you go. I'm not going to hit my my tip is uh, what we talked about earlier. This Samson. Now I'll tell you the name. It's called the Go Mic. The Samson Go Mic, and this is the receiver module. It it clips right onto your smartphone with clips that are built into the receiver, and connects to your smartphone either via USB or via analog. And then you can get either uh, a handheld mic or a mic belt pack with a lavalier on it. And what's cool that not only you know the form factor is good because it straps onto your cell phone, but it has two receivers in it, and you can have them separate go into your cell phone by USB, or you can mix them together to have a mix of the two mics. So so often, we as content producers need to make a little video. And by the way, this would be good for audio too. So if you're doing a live radio remote and running Absolutely. a software like Lucy Live or you're running a, a smartphone app like Bria or Linphone, and you're connecting with G.722 back to your Telos VX back at the studio, no problem. You can still use a wireless mic to connect to those and be out in the field and be wireless. So a lot of applications for uh, this, this product, the Samson Go Mic. All right, what's that? Lucy Live. Oh, Lucy Live, yeah. So we have two products right now you could do various things with. Just footprint that fits in your pocket. Amazing remotes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Really easy. All right, we're going to wrap it up here. I want to thank our sponsors, uh, bswusa.com, also the Telos Alliance at telosalliance.com, and Lavo at lawo.com slash tort. Thanks to Suncast, our producer back in uh, New York, producing our show. Thanks to Andrew Zarian, the founder of the GFQ Network. And thanks to my partner and friend here, Chris Tobin, for being my uh, co-host. Hey, it's great. I love long location broadcasts. They're the best. And finally, thanks to Rattle and Hum East in New York City for providing the venue. Oh, we have to thank Agnes. Agnes is our oh, barmaid. Agnes, Agnes is Agnes. our barmaid. She knows the stuff. That's right. We'll see you next week on This Week in Radio Tech. Bye-bye.